Cardiac work, also known as stroke work, is similar to the concept of work in physics. In physics, work is defined as force times distance. Stroke work can be thought of as work performed by the left ventricle to eject a volume of blood, defined as stroke volume multiplied by mean aortic pressure. And here, stroke volume corresponds to distance, whereas mean aortic pressure corresponds to force. Stroke work is best represented by a pressure volume loop. Pressure volume loops are graphs, where the pressure inside the left ventricle is on the y-axis, and the volume on the left ventricle is on the x-axis. Each loop represents changes in ventricular pressure and volume over the course of one cardiac cycle, or one heartbeat, which includes both ventricular systole, or contraction, and diastole, or relaxation. The lower right-hand corner is the end diastolic point, and it's the point in the cardiac cycle when diastole is over. At this point, the mitral valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle closes, leaving the left ventricle filled with the maximum volume of blood, called the end diastolic volume. And then systole begins, which is when the left ventricle contracts to push that blood into the aorta. Ventricle contraction makes the pressure shoot up, but for a brief period of time, both the mitral and aortic valves are closed, so left ventricle volume doesn't change. This phase is isovolumetric contraction, but it doesn't last long because eventually the pressure inside the left ventricle exceeds aortic pressure, making the aortic valve pop open, and that starts the ejection phase. During the ejection phase, blood from the left ventricle goes into the aorta, decreasing left ventricle volume. The left ventricle continues to contract, so ventricle pressure rises further, but then falls slightly. Finally, when aortic pressure exceeds left ventricle pressure, the aortic valve closes, marking the end of systole, or the end systolic point. At this point, left ventricle pressure is called end systolic pressure, and left ventricle volume is called end systolic volume. And the difference between end diastolic volume and end systolic volume is the stroke volume. After that, ventricle diastole begins, so the left ventricle muscle relaxes, making pressure fall. However, both the mitral and aortic valves are closed, so the volume remains constant. This phase is isovolumetric relaxation, and the atria fill with blood during this time. Eventually, the pressure in the left atrium exceeds that of the left ventricle, so the left mitral valve opens and blood flows into the left ventricle. As the left ventricle fills with blood, left ventricle volume rises back to its end diastolic volume, and the pressure increases only slightly. This relaxation phase continues until the mitral valve closes, letting the loop start all over again. All this happens during one heartbeat and stroke work during one heartbeat is proportional to the area inside the loop. In other words, the bigger the loop and the more the area inside of it, the more stroke work our heart does. In a related concept, cardiac minute work is defined as work per time, or how much work the heart muscle does over one minute. In terms of cardiac function, cardiac minute work equals mean aortic pressure times cardiac output, where cardiac output is defined as heart rate or beats per minute times the stroke volume. And since mean aortic pressure can be calculated as stroke work divided by stroke volume, we can replace that in the equation and see that cardiac minute work is equal to stroke work times heart rate. Cardiac minute work has two separate components, pressure and volume work. Pressure work is the amount of work the left ventricle must produce in order to push the blood past any downstream resistance which can be physiological, like aortic pressure, or pathological in conditions like aortic stenosis, when the aortic valve has a narrower opening. So the left ventricle must exert a much greater force to push the blood into the aorta. Volume work is the amount of blood that the left ventricle moves per time and can be thought to be equivalent to cardiac output, which is defined as stroke volume times heart rate. For example, in strenuous exercise, the heart rate increases and therefore increases the cardiac output or volume work. Additionally, cardiac minute work is directly correlated with myocardial oxygen consumption. Interestingly, pressure work takes up much more myocardial oxygen consumption than volume work, which is why overall myocardial oxygen consumption does not correlate well with cardiac output. Looking at the aortic stenosis example again, the increase in pressure work greatly increases myocardial oxygen consumption, but less blood actually makes it past the narrowed aortic valve opening, so volume work decreases. It's also interesting to look at the difference between the two ventricles with regard to the pressure work they normally perform. 
So even though both ventricles pump the same amount of blood, the left ventricle has to overcome the mean aortic pressure of about 100 millimeters of mercury, while the left ventricle pressure needs to surpass pulmonary artery pressure, which is only 15 millimeters of mercury. So although the volume work of both ventricles is the same, the pressure work of the left ventricle is greatly increased. So normally, the left ventricle wall is thicker than the right ventricle wall because it performs more pressure work and therefore requires more oxygen. In pathological conditions like systemic hypertension, where the systemic vascular resistance is increased, aortic pressure is higher than normal, so the left ventricle must perform even more pressure work. Over time, the left ventricle wall thickens even more in order to compensate, which is called left ventricle hypertrophy. Similarly, in conditions like pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary pressure is higher than normal, and that causes right ventricle hypertrophy. This increases myocardial oxygen consumption and keeps things balanced for a while. Unfortunately though, if left untreated, ventricular hypertrophy can eventually progress to ventricular failure, which is when the ventricles can't pump enough blood to meet the body's needs. Alright, as a quick recap. Stroke work is defined as stroke volume times mean aortic pressure, and cardiac minute work is stroke work times heart rate. Stroke work is best represented by a pressure volume loop, and stroke work during one heartbeat is proportional to the area inside the loop. Cardiac minute work is directly correlated to myocardial oxygen consumption, and can be divided into pressure work and volume work. Pressure work uses much more oxygen than volume work, in some conditions, the increased ventricle pressure work, like systemic or pulmonary hypertension, the ventricles adapt by thickening their walls. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.